All right, so let's run down uh, where we're at. The, in addition to what we saw with Trump in Russia, and I think, you know, to a large extent, this is what, this is why we saw Mueller drop these, um, I mean, I feel like they know, obviously, a lot more than we have a sense of at this point. Or at the very least, they know stuff that we can speculate on. And I think it was a very conscious effort to drop those uh, 12 or 13 indictments before Trump met with Putin. Because, again, the idea that you wouldn't cancel this summit over this is very far-fetched, right? I mean, or push it, push it back. But this is pretty standard operating procedure. You, to go and meet with them after they've been accused of this by your people who presumably you think are acting in the best interests of the country. Now, maybe you don't think that, but you'd have to establish that. But to go, and remember, this is a summit where when asked about the agenda, Donald Trump said, I'll tell you afterwards. It's strange that they didn't cancel the summit or punt. We're going to push this back two months. I mean, they did this, they did this with, like, what, with the, the Mexican president, right? Or didn't they do it with Australia? I mean, like, when you have these type of controversies, particularly in this situation, that's what you do. That's what you do. But they didn't do it. And so it was weird. And I think uh, Mueller wanted to give the president the opportunity to react in the way that a normal president would. And that's not overly belligerent. Right? I mean, the idea that if it like came out that uh, the U.S., there was charges in Mexico that the United States had... Um, had meddled in the uh, their election via funding, via if internet end hacking it. and stealing in, in information, and that the president of Mexico would be like, no worries, we're not going to react to this at all. I, if I was a citizen of Mexico, I'd be like, what the, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, just think of any number of places where we've instigated coups. What if, you know, like, say Allende resisted the coup and he survived. Would he the next week be like, yeah, and Richard Nixon should come to yeah, town? Absolutely, of course not. It's absurd. <laughs> yeah. It's absurd. It's absurd. It's absurd. Diplomacy um, comes second. So I think that was, I think that was, I think Trump was set up uh, on some level to, it was, he was, it was a test. Let me put it that way. I wouldn't say it was set up. It was a test. You didn't do so well, and uh, the the sort of I guess the establishment reacted in the way that was somewhat predictable. Um, the establishment and more, and I'm not saying that in a, a derisive term. I'm just saying that like you know that it was so outside of the norm of behavior. Meanwhile, yesterday after the summit, the DOJ. And this was an investigation that parallels Mueller's. It is not was not Mueller who did this. Now, two witch hunts. I would yes, <laughs> dual witch hunts. Multiple I would be very hunts. surprised if uh, Mueller was not either finding information they were passing on or aware of what's going on. But Justice Department now uh, arrested and charged a Russian national who courted the NRA and Republican Party was, uh, and the DOJ claims was secretly working as a foreign agent. In a sworn aff affidavit, FBI agent Kevin Helson, and this is the way it is. It's not just some FBI agent says like, hey, I have these suspicions. This is the, 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 they present the evidence through this way. <clears throat> Said uh, Maria Butina worked to set up a, quote, back channel communications between American, Americans and the Kremlin. Her effort was underway by March 2015. So this predates Donald Trump. It kicked into high gear during the election season. 
These lines could be used by the Ruf Russian Federation to penetrate the U.S. national decision-making apparatus to advance the agenda of the Russian Federation, according to the affidavit. It does not name the gun rights organization, but um, you simply need to uh, Google Butina and NRA to see that this has been an ongoing story. I mean, I'm looking at something by uh, Josh Israel. I think this was from the Daily Beast. Why has the NRA been cozying up to Russia? This is from November 2016. From uh, Fe February of 2017. The Kremlin and GOP have a new friend, and boy, does she love guns. I mean, it's all about this, uh, this woman and the inroads she had been making into the NRA and other conservative organizations. Butina's apparent supervisor is the Russian Senator Alexander Torshin, who also spent years building relationships in the NRA. I mean, the reason why you would go to the NRA is probably twofold. One is they have incredible sway over the Republican Party. And two, they're incredibly corrupt. <laughs> and uh, maybe there's a shared affinity for guns. The evidence set forth in the affidavit suggests the NRA was being used by the Russian government as a conduit to the Republican Party and political leaders in the U.S. There is something like $30 million extra that the NRA spent in this election. In 2016. Uh, she is a lifetime NRA member. She attended the NRA's 2014 yearly meeting as a special guest of the organization's president. This is a, a woman who is in her mid-20s. Her organization that she, I guess, built? I don't know. Um... That paid Russia's for David did. Clark for travel and accommodations. Um, at that same uh, NRA meeting. Butina's influence operation was underway in March 2015, according to affidavit, when she emailed an American with a proposal called Project Discretion Diplomacy. She predicted that an unnamed major political party which we know is the Republican Party, would ascend to power in 2016. The American responded with advice on how to cultivate relationships in that party as well as a list of Americans she should get to know. You have already met all the Americans necessary to introduce you to everyone on that list. Now, this guy, I believe, U.S. person number one, appears to be Paul Erickson. He is a longtime Republican insider who claimed to be an advisor to the Trump transition uh, team. He connected her with um, different conservative and Republican operatives. A person who spoke with Butina told the Daily Beast that she had several meetings with Representative Dana Rohrbacher, who you will recall was the subject of a joke that was not supposed to leave the Republican caucus, when uh, Paul Ryan said that the only two people I know are paid by the Russians are Dana Rohrbacher and Donald Trump. Getting on the square. Rohrbacher did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Um, she, there's pictures of her hobnobbing with Scott Walker, with Wayne LaPierre, with former NRA head David Keene. Butina had help, like I said, from at least one American in her effort to build back channels between top Republican Party insiders and the Kremlin. Uh, U.S. person one, that is Paul Erickson, supposedly. Unrelated to specific presidential campaigns, I've been involved in securing a very private line of communication between the Kremlin and political party leaders. We know that's Republican leaders through, of all conduits, the NRA, he wrote. Maybe he lied. Uh, Butina also targeted the National Prayer Breakfast as her effort to shore up. So there, it is quite possible that there was money funneled through the NRA to Republican Party leaders. Now, 
Does that mean the Republican Party leaders knew where the money was coming from? Probably not, although there may have been suspicions at one point, right? These things get, tend to get a little leaky. Why would the NRA do this? Well, what happens? I mean, there's always a person, right? She doesn't show up and walk up to the bank and say, I'd like to deposit this money into the NRA uh, bank account. There's conduits. And these conduits always get a cut. <laughs> they always get a cut. And so the answer is an organization that is incredibly mercenary to the point where they will promote the sale of weapons that kill toddlers every single day in this country. Do you find it hard to believe that someone would take $30 million dollars if they can get a 10% cut? No, it's a win-win. It's a win-win-win. Three wins. Winner for the payer, winner for the conduit, winner for the person who gets the money. See, not everything's a zero-sum game. That's There's right. This is not a zero-sum game. everybody to benefit. Everybody Ev benefits. Everybody. Everyone benefit. gets the this, taste. <laughs> look, this, um, and Butina, then the question is, look, what's the relationship with Donald Trump. Is there any relationship to the campaign? We don't know that yet. Although, here's an interesting video. Oh, uh, did you get it? To check your IM. I thought this was on the list here. No. Watch this. This is a, uh, a question at 2015, uh, July 11th. This is a... Um, question during a Freedom Fest event in Las Vegas, Nevada. And here is on CNN the voice of Maria Butina who has been arrested and indicted. Uh, I'm visiting from Russia. Ah, so my question... Putin. Good friend of Obama, Putin. My he question, likes Obama a lot. Go ahead. My question will be about foreign politics. Okay. If you would be elected as a president, what will be your foreign poli politics, especially in the relationships with my country? And do you want to continue the politics of sanctions that are damaging of both economy, or you have any other ideas? Okay. Obama gets along with nobody. The whole world hates us. You know, it's an amazing thing. You look at Mexico. They hate us, they hate our leadership, and yet they're making a fortune. China hates us. China's building ports in the, in the South China Sea. We could never do a thing like that because we'd have to get environmental impact statements, okay? So we don't. I jokingly said to a friend, do you think they got an environmental impact statement when they did? So China hates I'm us, funny. and yet they're making a fortune. Everybody hates us, and yet they make money with us. With me, we're gonna make money on them, and they're gonna like us. I know Putin, and I'll tell you what, we'd get along with Putin. Putin has no respect for President Obama. Big problem. Big problem. And Russia has been driven. You know, I've always heard, for years I've heard, one of the worst things that can happen to our country is if Russia ever gets driven to China. We have driven them together with the big oil deals that are being made. We've driven them together. That's a horrible thing for this country. We have made them friends because of incompetent leadership. I believe I would get along very nicely with Putin, okay? And I mean where we have the strength. I don't think you'd need the sanctions. I think that we would get along very, very well. I really believe that. We don't need the sanctions. It's a long way to go to get there, isn't it? A long way to go uh, to get there. So uh, this will be interesting to see where this thread goes, but... Um, if Marcy Wheeler is, uh, is correct, we're going to see more in the uh, coming days, ladies and gentlemen. And um, Oh, are you the adoption lady? Oh, let's uh, just, sorry, my mistake. I should let, have mentioned that. Let me, just, let me just go over a little bit of like what, what we're seeing in terms of, 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 of people starting to not necessarily run for the hills. Like I say, they're not, the, the rats aren't leaving the sh uh, sinking ship. But they do seem to be keeping an eye on the life rafts. Like they're starting to like just sort of like take two steps towards the door. 
They're looking over their shoulder. They're looking at who they're going to have to climb over to get on that life raft, sizing up people. Former, uh, this is from uh, Axios. Former senior White House official who worked closely with Trump immediately texted us, need a shower. That probably would be Reince Priebus, right? Um, it's such a riot. It's like I was just biding my time to be one of Trump's Rince own. Previous Prince in the shower. Exactly. Former National Security Council officials. Dude, this is a total effing disgrace. The president's lost his mind. Um, Face Nation anchor Margaret Brennan was in the audience, told AP she was messaging some U.S. officials during the speech who said they were turning off the television. Um, there were all sorts of indications you had. Devin Nunes, remember him? He says uh, y- yesterday in the afternoon. Uh, uh, when was this? He said this yesterday. Oh, no, no. Oh, the night before. Yeah. The night before he meets with uh, when it's clear that Trump is actually going to meet with uh, with Putin. Um, Nunes says, and this is written first by uh, the Washington Examiner. Right. So this is going out. They're sending their leak out to their guy. Um, What few mentioned was that there had been a similar assessment, not speculation or even reported account in the press, but an official government assessment that came to the same conclusion about these um, Russian military intelligence officials conducting the hacking of Democrats during the 2016 The assessment was on the House Intelligence Committee's report on Russian active measures sent to the intelligence community on March 22nd, released publicly in a heavily censored form on April 27th. This is like what Nunes was his insurance policy, right? It's pretty clear if you read the indictment and you find uh, you read our four findings in Chapter 2, even with our redactions, you get most of the indictment. House Intel Chairman Rep. Devin Nunes told me in a phone conversation on Sunday Running for the hills, folks. If you didn't have redactions, you get more uh, than what's in the indictment, except for the Russian names. <clears throat> this isn't looking good. Can I testify against my kids or Jared or something? Exactly. <laughs> I would love to talk to Mueller about this grand conspiracy that I was manipulated. By. Exactly. Nunes is really getting out there. Uh, hi, my name is John Miller. Yeah, uh, hi, the this president is John would like to Miller. Point out, he's been <laughs> saying this has been going on. All along. The president knew it was happening, but he was also... The president has been being a double agent to expose the crime the whole time, and he's ready to come forward. He's ready to come forward now. (laughs) This is John Miller. The president's super upset about what's happening to America, and he's ready to blow the lid off of the criminal actions of his family. It's sad, but necessary. It's full immunity. Full immunity. I mean, so we're seeing... We're seeing... To see Devin Nunes, honestly, though, to see Devin Nunes, the guy who jumped out of his car with his aide in the middle of the night and literally sprinted to the White House to get Donald Trump information on what testimony was going on is now coming out and claiming that he oversaw a process that had basically, you know, found this uh, stuff about the Russian hacking and trying to promote that now is Uh, indicative of like them being aware that they're, that the, the jig may very well be up. Now understand this. They're not going to impeach him. No. They're not going to impeach him. They're, I mean, they won't, I mean, they're going to just try and basically play this out until the fall. And, there's other indications that Do you think like it's funny like I agree definitely not going to be impeached but I am actually starting to see a scenario where he goes to jail. Like Ultimately, that to me is like wow he might actually not leave while office. he's president not while he's no I'm talking post president. Oh I'm like I I haven't th- no totally. I honestly thought like you know I I've even I've been of the mind that like you know turn the other page type of stuff but the more this goes on I'm like this dude might go to jail. Oh, I think when he's in a position that he could go to jail, in other words, when he's not president, um, I think there are going to be people who are going to try and rehabilitate themselves by taking it out on him. 
Not if he declares himself president for life first. That's I'm president for life. I don't know why you're putting the cuffs on me. Like he, <laughs> he's gonna try. Doesn't to it work himself. that way? I pardon me. I pardon myself. I pardon myself. Uh, uh, um, I, I, he only asked the. He only asked for three things. This is John Miller. Number one, obviously, he just wants to help his country. Number two, three hundred million dollars. And number four, he would like ownership stakes in the Kiev beauty pageant industry. Um, That's it. We'll, we'll see, but I think that's getting way ahead of ourselves. But what is also interesting...